All right, so today, the day of this recording is, I think, is it 927? Yes? Okay, good. So write down the date for today. And um, we're going to be solving equations with variables on both sides in this lesson. And we're going to be doing it as if we have no idea how to do it at all. So there's a couple of big ideas here that are really important. This is the key idea. Um, to solve equations with variables on both sides, collect the variable terms on one side and the constant terms on the other side. We need to understand the difference between these two things. So can somebody please tell us what a variable term is just by an example? So what would be an example of a variable term? Okay, raise your hand. And the faster you raise your hand, the better because it's awkward when the video has all this dead time. Go ahead. Yes. Six X is a perfect example. That's one example. Can someone give another example of a variable term? A variable term. Yes, Angelina. Um, one N. One N is correct. Eva. Um, three pi seems like it would be, but pi is actually a number, not a variable. Pi is a number that never changes. So what would be another variable term? Anthony? Perfect. Is it okay if I make it a negative 8k? Just for, so we understand. Okay, great. Now I need to know what constant terms are. Constant terms. So examples of constant terms. You're going to collect all of them to one side. So give me a constant term, please. Go ahead. Uh, negative, seven. negative 7. That's a constant term. Yes. 20. 20 is a constant term. What else do you got for me? Yes. Negative 5 is a constant term. How about a fraction or a decimal? Go with it. 8 over 9. That's a constant term. Great. Does everybody understand what's happening? These are the things we need to have. We're going to fill these steps in as we go, but let's start with an example. Okay? So we're going to start with this example right here, I believe. Solve this equation. Check your solution. Let me see if I can make this any bigger for you. That's a little bit better. All right. So what did I say? I'm going to draw, I want you guys to imagine, okay? Close your eyes for a moment. We're going to head on down to the farm. Yep, go ahead. I have my eyes closed. We're all going to do it. Okay. We're heading down to the farm and we're going to draw a fence. And we're going to have some animals on each side of the fence. Okay? So here's what I want to imagine. You can open your eyes now. We have this fence here. And this is the uh, different sides of the fence. And over here you have... These um, guys right here, uh, 15, and we're going to imagine that the constant terms, which are the green things over here, we're going to imagine that those are cats, constant cat, okay? The variable terms, which are these blue things, those are going to be dogs, okay? Dogs. Okay, so don't worry about negative and positive numbers. Tell me, do we have cats and dogs together? on one side of the fence. And if we do, which side is it on? So who can answer that? Just raise your hand and answer that for me. Uh, anybody else? Do we have cats and dogs together? Yes? Um, which ones are the cats again? Cats are the um, constants, the green. And dogs are the blue. Dogs are the blue. Yeah, they're they are together. Where are they together? On the left side of the fence or the right side? The left side? side. Perfect. What happens when cats and dogs are together? Yes. It does not end well. Cats and dogs are going to fight like cats and dogs. So we need to remove the cats or the dogs on the left side. Notice right here, I'm going to kind of show you. Now these are the cats and these are the dogs. The cats are the constants, the 15, the, neg the 15 in green. Do we want to remove the cats or do we want to remove the dogs? Because we've got to put them somewhere else. Okay. So what do you want to do, Ava? Why do you want to remove the dogs and not the cats? Why do you want to remove the 2x, the negative 2x, and not the 15? Because if you remove the negative 2x, and when you have to put it on the other side, the dogs get along with the cat and dogs. Ah, perfect. If you move the 15 over there, which is the cats, they're not going to get along with the dogs on the other side, the right side. Does that, does that make sense? So it's pretty simple. We need to move the blue term, which is the variable term, and we don't really know how we can just, we can't just grab it and move it, guys. This is very important to understand. You can't just grab it and move it. You have to cancel it out. 
So how would you cancel it out? What do you think you would do, Eva? <coughs> you would add 2x to the left side. If you did it to the left side, what must you do to the right side? Imagine the scale, the legal balance. If you added 2 to the left side, what must you do to the right side? Add 2x. So you must do that to keep it balanced. So if we added 2x to the left side, we have to add 2x to the right side. Those are going to cancel to 0. And we're going to have the following equation. We're going to have 15 is equal to negative 5x. And we start to say to ourselves, wait a second, I know how to do that, don't I? I know how to do that. It's a one-step equation. Right? Right, so it's a negative 7 plus 2, so you've got to subtract and keep the sign of the higher. What are we going to do to solve the black equation? Uh, yes? Divide both sides by negative 5. Good. So x is equal to negative 3, and that's the answer. How do we know it's correct? Well, the only way we really know it's correct is if we check our solution. So I'm going to go on the whiteboard, so if you're on the video, it might not be too helpful, but I just want to save all this space here. Um, or actually, maybe it would be smarter to do it here. Let's make the right decision. Okay, so I have this equation, 15 minus 2 times x. And in our class, we actually just did this. We actually just did this. We took the negative 3 and we put it here, we put it here, right? We do PEMDAS. So I've got 6 for this. I've got positive 21 for this. And the 15 is not doing anything. It's just staying. But 15 plus 6, is that 21? Yes. So what we can say is we've checked our solution, and this is the right answer. We're actually in good shape now. Now we're on to the next question. This is where the steps are going to be helpful, I think, because this next question is not really looking so nice, right? So let's look at that. It says solve. So what I want to do is I want to go to the steps and tell you the first step to solving these things. The first step is always going to be the following. Simplify each side. Simplify each side of the equation. And what do I mean by that? I mean distribute and um, combine like terms. Okay, if you don't like the abbreviations, you can write it out. But I said distribute or combine like terms. For example, there's other ways you can simplify, of course. Please write this step, okay, in the steps. Simplify each side, distribute, and combine like terms if possible. So let's look at the next equation. Does everybody see it? It's right here, right? And how can we simplify this equation? Let's get this stuff out of our way, okay? And let's just work on that. So does anybody see a way I could simplify here? What would you do? Distribute, combine like terms? Thoughts? Go ahead. Perfect. Step one is to distribute. So we have negative 2x, and we have negative 2 times negative 5. Guys, we need to get out of the habit of bringing that negative sign down. What is negative 2 times negative 5? Yes. Positive 10, or just 10, right? So just put positive 10. Don't put minus negative 10. Just put positive 10 when you simplify that. Okay. Now I've got my equal sign. Let me slide things over a little bit here. Slide things over a bit. Okay, and what do I want to do on the left, uh, the right side? Sorry, the right side. Yes, Hannah. Cool. So six times two is. Yep. And then we got to do six times negative a half. Well, first thing I want to do is I want to figure out six times a, ne a positive six times a negative is going to come out positive or negative. Yes. Positive 6 times a negative is going to come out positive or negative? Negative. So let's just put down a negative sign. Simple as that. Okay? Now I want to take 6 and I want to take a half of that. Multiply it by a half. Yes? I think so, but I'm not fully sure. Is it 3? It is, because it's half of 6. Half of 6 is half multiplied by 6. Of means multiply, if you remember correctly. And don't forget your x there. Do you guys see the red equation? You see it? Yeah. Does it remind you of the top equation, the first one, number 1? Does it remind you of the one up above? Sort of? So what do you think step two is? We talked about going to the farm. So can you guys tell me what step two would be? Collect. Yes, Lily. Um, so on my side,
Good. So let's look at that. So I'm saying the following. Collect all constant terms to one side and all variable terms to the other side, if that helps. There's going to be more steps. My apologies. The box is not big enough for me. Okay, collect all constant terms to one side and all variable terms to the other side. It's in green, so we're going to use green here to do that. So let's collect all the constant terms. Remember about the cats and the dogs, guys. Does that make sense? Remember about the cats and the dogs. So you see how you have the x and the 10 together on the left side? I think Lily had offered an option. What did you say, Lily, for an option? Um, add 2x to 51 centimeters. Perfect. Yeah, so let's move the x's over to the right side. Now, you might notice, guys, that you don't have to do it the way that Lily did it. You actually could have moved anything because either way, you still haven't resolved the fighting of the cats and the dogs on the right side of the fence, have you? You're not going to solve all of the fighting and you're not going to get world peace in one move on this equation. So you can move whatever you want and then figure out how to get peace. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you want, put all the x's on the left side. Some of you love having your x's on the left side. Some of you hate having negative numbers in front of your x. So you might need to put it on the right side or the left side. It's your choice. It's your choice. You have a choice. So now we have the following and we have, let's see, I think we have 10 is equal to 12 minus 1x. Don't forget about those signs, people. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Now we've got to decide what to move and now it matters. Now it matters. So look at the situation, look at the cats, look at the dogs, and decide how you're going to remedy this fighting on the right side. Who else? Can I, anybody I haven't heard from? Who haven't we heard from today? This is what I'm talking about, the awkwardness in the video. Boy. Oh, Anthony. I want to know what I need to move to stop the stop the stop all the fighting over here on the right side. Yeah, because the twelve should combine with the ten, and they'll be in harmony. They'll be peaceful. Yes. If you move the x back over, it's not going to help solve the problem. You just took one problem and made another problem. You know what I'm saying? So we need to move the ten. So how do we move it algebraically? Yes. No? Yeah. Yes? Subtract 12. subtract 12. That's how we algebraically do it. We have to use the rules of algebra. We have negative 2 equals negative 1x, or just negative x. That is step 2. It's done. Now, once you've done that, I'm going to write something as a step that's kind of weird. Do we have a question? No, You're okay? Oh, you know how to help me. Okay. Let me just get my last step in first. So once you've done that, solve the result oops r e s u l t from step 2 why did i write that because what i'm saying is i've already told you how to solve a one or a two step equation so now you just need to simply do that simply do solving the one or two step equation so here's where we're at we want to solve this result so how do we solve this result yes Divide by negative 1. If we've mastered those quizzes, we'll find that that makes a lot of sense. Negative divided by a negative gives us a positive 2 for x. So x is equal to positive 2. Do we feel comfortable with that? Yes? Okay, how are we doing on time here? Not too bad. So, um, as you, we've gone through a couple of problems, and now we want to make sure we do some practice. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try problem number one and pri try problem number three. And we're going slow and steady here because we're building skills that are going to be important for a long time. So try problem number one and try problem number three. Guess what? The types of equations you're solving on this video, if you're in eighth grade, you're going to be doing them all year. Mm, you're going to be doing most of eighth grade. You're going to use them. And then all of ninth grade, you're going to use them. And then all of 10th grade, you're going to use this. This is probably the most important skill that you'll learn in, I think this might be the most important skill you learn in this class in the whole entire year. It's that insane. It's that insane. You'll use it all of 10th grade. You'll use it all of 11th grade. You'll never stop using this skill. It's the most important. So please pause the video and try numbers one and three. 
So as you're working through this problem, number one, you're either going to come out to a decimal or a fraction. It's not a very nice, nicely defined problem. And I think it's a little unfair because you're kind of new to this. So I want to change this problem a little bit. I want to change this problem for a reason. Here's why I want to change it, because it's not fair to say, here's the first time you're ever going to do this. Give it a shot. I'd rather you do this problem. I think this problem will be a little bit better for you. So instead of this, why don't you solve that? Now, if you're already through it, don't worry. If you're already done with number one, just go ahead and move on with your life. But I like, if you don't like that problem, why don't you try to solve this problem instead, OK? Try to solve this problem instead, a little more fair. So if you solve the original equation, your answer would be 19 over 5, but negative. That's for this guy. But if you went ahead and solved this equation here, you're going to get an answer of, I believe, x equals negative 4. OK? So this is the equation answer here for number 1. Now, hopefully you've already done number 3 out. When you solve number 3, and I'm going to try to do this in my head so it could be wrong, I think you're going to get z is equal to 3 for an answer. Okay? Make sure you have your supporting work, but I believe that it should come out to z equals 3. You don't get credit unless you have supporting work. Guys, what I'm going to do again is, well, let me pause the video. So we'll end the video here.